Well hello Internet and welcome to part three of my Android development tutorial for beginners. Today we're going to focus in on understanding App Inventor. I'm going to provide a complete overview of all the components and what they do. I'm going to explain pretty much all the jargon you're ever going to need to know. I'm going to show you how to open an App Inventor app from another App Inventor app. And we're going to spend a lot of time on user interface components and their events and their methods and that's the jargon we're going to be talking about. And I have a whole lot to do so let's get into it okay so this is the application we're going to be making in this tutorial I'm sure it's a little bit blurry because this is the emulator and the emulator is a little bit blurry but basically we're just going to have this up here and what this is going to do is track events so when this button gets clicked it's going to play a zombie sound and it's going to show button clicked whenever the checkbox is clicked it's going to say, hey, the checkbox has been changed to true, and now it's false. We're going to also use drop-down sort of lists. I'm going to click on this for favorite color, click on red. You're going to see red was picked in list, and we're going to be able to add different colors, and we're going to be able, like, let's say that we wanted to use purple. Uh, come in here, type in purple, and then hit done, and then hit add, and then we click on favorite color, and now purple's in there, and now we can pick purple. We're also going to be able to delete items. We're also going to be able to come in here and demonstrate how the slider works. See the number appears changing. We're going to be able to open our zombie app from inside of this app, and I'm just doing this just to demonstrate this. And I'm also going to cover the passwords and how the password text boxes work, as well as notifications, and a whole bunch of other different things. So let's just jump into it. Okay, so I went ahead and created all of this on my own. And of course, all I did was I went over into layout, grabbed a horizontal arrangement layout tool, drug it over here, dropped it inside of there, then went over to user interface. And let's say that I decided I wanted a text box. I dragged that over there, dropped it in, and buttons and all these other different things. And of course, we can come in here and delete all of that stuff now because we don't need it, just there for demonstration purposes. Click OK, horizontal arrangement, delete, and this says the page at da 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 da, deleting this component will delete all the blocks associated with it. OK, yes. All right. So that's all gone. So that's all I basically did was I created this horizontal layouts and then I dropped all these components inside of here. And I just want to focus in on how they work. Now, of course, each component is going to have specific properties that are going to be able to be set inside of the designer inside of App Inventor. And we're in designer right now because that's highlighted. And these are the properties that I'm referring to. Now we can change the background color, whether the button in this situation is enabled, the fonts, the image like we did in the last tutorial, the shape, all these different things. Now the properties can also be set at runtime. And by runtime, I just mean when the app is being run. However, you're going to be making all those changes over here inside of blocks right here. Now as we saw last time we can both get as well as set values for components and maybe what I should do is go into designer and explain all of the components very briefly and what they do. I'm going to try to cover every single component here in like a minute, minute and a half. Okay, so of course buttons are going to be used to detect clicks and perform certain actions whenever they are clicked. Check boxes are going to detect clicks and either be in an on or off position like you saw. Clock is going to be used both as a timer and also to perform different tasks over and over again. Whenever you want to perform something multiple times, you use a clock. It's also going to handle time conversion and dates. Image is going to allow you to display images as well as perform limited forms of animation. And we're going to get into all these over the course of this tutorial. Labels, of course, are just used for showing text that you do not want the user to be able to change. List picker, we just saw a list picker with the favorite color thing. Just going to display multiple options to pick from. Notifier is going to be used to display dialog boxes as well as log errors. Password text box is just like a text box, going to allow the user to enter text except whenever you use a password text box it's going to be in stars each of the letters. Sliders are going to allow you to drag for a result which is going to be really great whenever you have a wide variety of different possible values and the web viewer is going to allow you to display web pages. Get into the layout. The horizontal arrangement is used whenever you want to lay out components left to right. Table arrangement, which is actually what you're going to use most of the time, is going to be used whenever you want to lay out components in a grid of rows and columns. And vertical arrangement, which I don't think I've ever used, is going to be used to arrange components from top to bottom. Then you have your different media options. Camcorder, this is just going to allow you to call for the video recording app to open up. Camera is also going to open up the camera app. And of course, 
course you can set it so that uh, any video or pictures that are taken here are going to be returned to your application to use. Image Picker is going to allow your users to pick an image that they want to use inside of your app. Player is going to play audio or video. Sound is going to play sound as well as provide for vibration options. Sound Recorder is going to allow you to record sound. Speech Recognizer is going to try to convert your speech to text. Text to speech is going to do the absolute opposite. Video Player is going to play videos and I'm going to show you in the next tutorial I'm going to create a big media application. Then we get to drawing and animation. First you're going to have a ball which is really cool. It's going to basically be, you can animate it, you can make it move across the screen, you can change its speed, you can detect collisions, it can bounce, it can be thrown, it can do a whole bunch of things. That's going to be a lot of fun to cover. Canvas is going to be where you're going to draw your animations on the screen. It's also, it can, you can do all kinds of things with it. It's a lot of fun. Image Sprite is basically like ball. It's going to allow you to animate, bounce, detect collisions, but it's going to work with any image. So this is basically where you're going to create games. Then we get into sensors. The accelerometer is going to detect shaking as well as measure acceleration of your device. Barcode scanner is kind of self-explanatory. The location sensor we saw in the previous tutorials is going to provide location information. Near field stands for near field communication, which is going to allow us to transfer data between two devices that are near each other. Orientation sensor is going to detect the device's spatial orientation. So if you're rotating it, like in the real world, it's going to detect that. Then we have the social components that are available. Contact picker is going to allow the user to pick a person from their contact tax Email Picker is going to work in a similar way. It's going to allow you to find the right email by just entering in a bunch of characters and it's going to locate it. Phone Call is going to allow the user to basically make a telephone call. Phone Number Picker is going to display a list of contacts that you can call. Texting, yes, it's going to be possible inside of App Inventor to text. And then the Twitter component is going to provide numerous ways to interact with Twitter. Storage, first we have Fusion Tables Control. Now Fusion Tables, it's basically a rest full API that's going to provide access to data. And if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. I'm going to do a whole tutorial on it. And basically, it just provides a way to get data to use in your application. TinyDB, we used that in the previous tutorial, I believe. It's also going to allow you to store data on your device, while TinyWebDB is going to allow you to store and retrieve data from a web service. And then finally, Activity Starter is going to provide you the option to launch another activity or application. We're going to see that in this tutorial as well. And then the Bluetooth client and Bluetooth server are are going to provide ways to communicate between devices using Bluetooth. And then we have web, which is basically a non-visible component that's going to be used to access data on the internet. And then technically, finally, we have Lego Mindstorms, which I'm not going to cover because it's very, very expensive to get into that stuff. So there is a basic rundown of all the components, every single component over here in the palette, aside from Lego Mindstorms. Now that we've covered all that stuff, let me get back to what I was previously talking about. Now, all of these components, of course, inside of the designer are going to provide numerous different properties that we're going to be able to change. But like I was saying before, we're also going to be able to do that at runtime or while the application is running by going into blocks. So let's come over here and here's all the components that I went and created inside of my layout. And let's just click on button testing for an example. All right, so what you're going to see here on the screen is the Gitter blocks these guys right here are going to be light green. Now this color has changed over the different iterations of App Inventor, but the Gitter part's always been lighter than the Setter part, hence it says Set. Also, you're going to notice that the getters are going to have a plug over here on the left side of the screen, while the setters are going to have a socket over on the right side of the screen. And you're also going to notice here that there's like a dip. And mainly these guys are going to be used in accordance with event handlers. Event handlers, now remember we're using the button component. These are event handlers. And as you can see, event handlers are smooth, which means they are pretty much self-contained they do everything you need them to do on their own, unlike these guys that have to be connected to different things. Basically, what's going on here is it's saying when my button called button testing is clicked, do stuff. One thing I could do is set the button testing or the button name button testing's background color to and then put that inside of there. So you're going to see the setters always have this socket on the side and the getters always have the plug on the left side. Another thing to think about here, and this is pretty much the last sort of thing that we're, at least we're going to talk about, there are things that are called methods. 
and let's just cycle through here until we find sound. And you can see right here, these are methods. Now methods are purple. And what they do is they provide just very common tasks. So if we have a sound component, well, chances are we're going to want to play it. And if we stop it, we're going to want to resume it. And we also might want to pause it. And another option that's inside of here is to vibrate the device. I know that's a little bit weird, but whatever. And that's in essence what a method is. Another way to very quickly notice or find a method is every single one of them has the word call at the very beginning. So a method is just a common operation that is performed. Another thing to come in here and talk about is comments because I haven't talked about them yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the button work. Let's go over into the designer again and let's take a look. What I want to do here is I want to handle an event which is going to be this button being clicked and whenever it's clicked I want this guy up here let's just highlight it come over here button event label whenever this button is clicked I want up here inside of here I want text to be displayed that says hey this button was clicked and on top of that I want to also play a sound and on top of that I also want the device to vibrate so let's come in here and make sure inside of media you have a sound inside of there and also if we click on sound right here and then come up here we all could also can see here that the zombie moan noise has been attached to that. So now we're going to go back into blocks. There we are. And let's set this up. So we're looking to handle an event that's going to be occurring whenever our button is clicked on. So we're going to click on this and we're going to say, okay, when the button was clicked on, we want to do some stuff. And one of the things that we want to do is we want to set the label with the text that says button clicked. So we go to our label that we want to change, click on that, and then we're going to say we want to set something so we know what we're looking for. And there it is, button event label text 2. Let's grab that, come up here, drop it in. There we go. Now, of course, there's going to be a socket over here that's going to require some extra information. We're going to click just anywhere except on a component, and we're going to say button clicked. And all of these block diagrams are going to be available in a link in the description under this video so you'll be able to easily see them there we go button clicked drop that right there and there we go another thing I said that I want to also cover comments now if you want to comment or describe what is going on here which is an extremely good idea by the way we're just gonna highlight this and right click on it and go add comment and then whenever we click on it it's gonna open up this little guy right here so let's just go and grab it and let's move it somewhere. Well, let's shrink it down and let's move it up here. And let's also enlarge it. Now we can do something like when button is clicked, change label, and let's increase the size on this. Play sound and vibrate. And this provides with a very, very nice way of describing exactly what's going to happen here. And if we click on that, it goes away. Click on that, it comes back. So there's comments. Comments are awesome. Use comments as much as humanly possible. All right, so what else did we want to do? Well, we wanted to play a sound and we also wanted to vibrate. So we have to come over here, find our sound component. There it is, just click on it. And we want to use the method that's going to allow us to play a sound and we can just drag it there. And then let's go and get sound again, click on it. We also want to vibrate, grab this guy drop it right there. We want to add a number in milliseconds. So let's say that we want it to vibrate for one second. That would be 1000 milliseconds. So we're going to find math. There that is. Get ourselves a number. Come over here, drop that in, select it, and then let's type in 1000. Well, didn't select it. There we go. And one second. All right, so there we go. We're going to vibrate for one second. We're going to play a sound. We're also going to change this to button clicked whenever the button is clicked. Now I put the actual app running at the very, very beginning of the tutorial so you could refer to it so that I didn't have to constantly run the app over and over and over again. Now another thing that we want to do here is we want certain things to occur whenever the app is initialized. One of those things is we want our label at the top of the screen to say screen initialized. Another thing we want to do is set up our list. Now I have always found it's better to set up our list. What I mean is the little box we clicked on to have favorite colors. I want to set that up inside of here. And how I always do it is to initialize a variable. So I'm going to come in here, initialize global, and I'm going to give it a name. And that name is going to be list of colors. There we go. Then what I want to do is go over to lists and I want to make my list. 
So come in here, drop that there. And if you can remember, I had red, green, and blue. Well, of course, that means I'm going to have to add an extra option on here. So click on this and go item, drop that in there. Then click anywhere and go red. And there that is. Drag that up there. And we're going to duplicate it. And we're going to duplicate it again. Drag that over there. Drag that over there. And red, blue, and green. And in a second here, I'm going to show you how to add items to our list and subtract items from our list. There's all kinds of neat things you can do with lists. All right, so now that I have the, this guy set up, what I want to do is I want to connect my list picker. Let's go back over here to designer. So here it is, favorite color. If we highlight that, it's going to say list picker one right there. What I want to do is I want to connect this component outside there in the designer to this list that's going to have red, green, and blue on it. How do I do that? Well, one way to do it is to initialize this whenever the application starts. And to do that, we go into the screen one. And whenever screen one or the application start up, basically we, what we want it to do is, remember, we want to tell the button event label that it has been initialized. So let's just come in here and duplicate that. Da, 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 and then change this to screen initialized. And there we got it. And now we want to also connect this list that we created inside of the blocks part of App Inventor to the list component that is over in the designer area. How to do that? Well, we got to get the designer area list here. And there it is. So click on list picker. And then what we need to do is look for list picker elements. And we want to set them. We want to attach the one in the blocks to the list picker that's in the designer. So we're going to get set right like that. And then the elements. And then we want to get this guy right here. We can just put our mouse up here and go get global list colors and drop that there. And there we go. Now we have those two connected. Any changes made to the list inside of here is going to automatically be updated to the list item that is on the designer part or in the app itself. All that stuff's set up. Another thing that I might want to do is to come in here and change the orientation or at least send an event saying that the orientation has changed on the screen. Click on screen and we can come in here and look for this screen orientation changes and here's other different events that it'll handle. I'm just going to get this one, drop that inside of there. And let's say that if the screen orientation of the device has been rotated, let's duplicate that, drag that, drop it inside of there. And we want to say something like like screen orientation changed. And there we go. Now we'll also be able to monitor that. This is just here for so we can look at it, click on things and watch different events being triggered. It's not there for any other reason other than to update that label. And there's other things, of course, with the button. Uh, let's come in here and go button testing. It can also sense if it has focus. It's lost focus. In this situation, it's not really going to work. Also, if there is a long click, we could also do that just to test it. And a long click, I think, is like if you hold it for more than a second, consider it a long click. So I'll duplicate this. And we'll also be able to track that event. And button, let's just type in long clicked. I don't know. If we want to check with the checkbox, let's just come out of here again, jump over into the designer. Here's the checkbox that I'm referring to right here. If I want to check or at least tell the label up here that the checkbox has been checked or unchecked, what I'm going to do, jump over into blocks. All of the events that can occur with the item are going to be tied to the item in the designer view. So we'll just go to checkbox. And we're going to say changed. We don't want it to basically test if it is positive or if there's a check in it or anything. We, what we're doing is we're looking for an event. See, that's the difference. If this was something that just tracked whether there was a check inside of it or not, that's not an event. An event is the checkbox has been changed. So that's the reason why it doesn't have is checked or whatever. And of course, you're going to be able to check if there's a checkbox inside of it. And of course, I'm going to show you how to do that. Basically, we're going to come in here and just going to change the label again, duplicate this, drop this inside of here. And of course, I'm going to want to have multiple different lines of text inside of here because I got to go and find out if the checkbox is checked. And I also have to put some text inside of it. That's going to require me to have the option to have multiple different lines of text. Anytime I need that, I go into text and then I go into join and drag that down here. Now I can do two lines instead of just one. So basically what I want to test, this is a string right here. I want to basically put out a note in my label that says if it is checked or not. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to say check box changed. So it has been changed. That's the name of this to 
put a space, make sure you do that. And then if I want to find out if it's either true or false, well, I'm going to go into the checkbox again. So let's click on that and let's look for checked right here. And what do I want to do? I want to get if it's checked or not. So that means I'm going to grab the getter, drop that in there, and that's going to automatically display that. See? Also, we can do the same thing with a list picker. Click on this. Let's say we want to track or we want to send a message to our label after it's picked, before it's picked, da 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 da. Okay, after it's picked, of course. Drop that right inside of there. Now, what do we want to do after it's picked? Well, we would just want to put something in the label. So let's duplicate this, drop this down inside of there. There we go. And I can also see I'm running out of space. Of course, there's little bars over here to give us some extra space. Drag that inside of there. Now, whenever an item has been picked from our list, we are also going to need a join. Well, we already got one there, of course. But in this situation, we want to put whatever was picked was picked in list. So let's sort of throw this away. Just grab this, throw it into trash. There it's gone. Grab this one, drop it right there. If we want to find out what was picked, well, list picker. Since we're getting information, we're going to be looking for getters, which are light green. And specifically, what we're looking for is selection. What was selected? There it is, light green, getter. There we are. Drop it right there, and there we go. And then we're gonna come down here, and we're gonna say, first we're gonna put a space, and we're gonna say was picked in list. All right, and we could continue to put other different little events inside of here, like for example, the add to list text box. Where is that at? Add to list text box. We could click on this guy right here, and we could say, or we would say that we wanna track if it gets focused, which just means that they clicked with their finger, or with their stylus or whatever inside of the text box and it's in there. That's all got focus and lost focus means. Lost focus of course just means they left. All right, so no big deal. Now if we want to be able to come in here and use the add list item and I'm going to also have a couple things on my website so that I don't have to repeat myself over and over again in regards to different blocks we can use. Okay, so another option we had, let's go over into the designer again. Click on that. Another option we had here was they could type in a color and then hit add and it would go into our list. Let's set that up. Go into blocks, of course, again. And we're going to specifically look for add list item button. So they're going to be entering their new color into add list text box. And then we're going to be clicking on add list item button to add it to the list. So click on that. We're specifically looking for a click. So come out of here. Come on down here. Drop that right there. And then zoom in. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Basically, let's let's send a message to our label at the top of the screen to show that an event has occurred. And then on top of that, we're going to have to go and actually add the item to our list. So we can just grab this guy right here. Oh, be careful. Duplicate. Grab it down here. And we're going to change this a little bit. Let's say that we want to add an extra line. And also, of course, we want to get rid of this one. So let's get rid of that. And another thing that we're going to want it to do is go to the add to list text box and get the actual text. So click on that and let's look for text, which is going to be the color that they entered. Grab that, drop it on there. And let's say, eh, actually, well, let's click on this. We want to put an extra string on here. Just drag it over there. There we go. And we'll say, put a string down here. Grab this right there. Duplicate. Grab this up there. And then we're going to say here in our little message at the top of our app, adding space. And this is going to give us the color that they want to add. Then I'm going to put another space and put to list. And there we go. So that's going to change the little label at the top of the screen. Then if I want to actually add this new color to our list, that means I'm going to have to click on lists. This is where all the list methods are. Add items to list. This is what I want to add. And then there's the item itself. Drag that out, drop it right there. And then I want to go and get our list, which I can refer to with the global, which is this guy up here. Put mouse right there. Get global list of colors, drag it, drop it down there, scroll down, and then I'm going to add the list itself right there. Remember, whenever this guy updates, the component in the app is also going to update. And then I just want to put whatever the new item is, and that's this guy right here. Click on that, duplicate, there we go. 
drag this, drop it over here, and there it is. There you can see. We're going to also provide an option to delete items out of the list, and guess what? It's going to be almost identical to this. So let's just click on this, and there we are. We just duplicated that, drag it, put it over here, and we just need to change a couple things. So we're going to have to look for the delete list item button. There it is. We're going to get the text, but we're going to get it from the delete list item text box. And we're going to say deleting and whatever they said, whatever color they said they want to delete out of the list. And then this guy here is going to have to go away. So let's go drag it and kill that. And we're going to be making changes to a list item. So that means we need to go into lists. And what specifically are we going to do here? We want to remove an item. So let's come down through here until we see remove. And there it is. Drag it out. Put it right here because that's where it goes. And there you can see right there. Now we're basically going to be doing exactly the same thing. We're going to be getting this guy. So let's just duplicate it, drag it, put it over here. There's the list. However, whenever we want to delete it, it's asking for an index. So that means we need to get the index. Now, everything in a list is labeled basically item number one, item number two, item number three, item number four, item number five, okay? So that's what the index is. It's just like referring to them as the second item in our bag of stuff. Now to get the index number for each of the items in our list, we are gonna come up here again. Anytime we're using lists, we're just going to go into our list tools. If we want the index, we're gonna look inside of here until we see index in list. And it's saying, if you give me the thing and the list, I'm going to tell you what the index is. That's what that's saying. So let's drag it out of here, drop it right there. And the thing that I want is going to be whatever they typed in that they want deleted. So duplicate it. And I should probably test that it's in there, but whatever. Just to be simple, I'm not going to do it this time. And then the list itself, which is going to be this guy right here. So duplicate that, drag it down here, and there we go. And that is how we'll remove items also. Well, I just looked at how long this video is going, and it's going a little bit long, and I think I covered a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold off on covering how to open other App Inventor applications inside of another Android App Inventor application until the next tutorial, as well as a really cool app that's free that I use all the time, and also cover notifications and a couple other things in the next part of the tutorial. Once again, remember all these blocks right here, there's a link to them in the description for this video. Please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.